The old ruins that make up what used to be St. Mary the Virgin's Church stand on the outskirts of Clop Hill alone and isolated like an old memory. Clearly present, yet forever connected to the past. The ruins are 650 years old and were used as a church up until 1848 when it was abandoned with only the Lich Gate and two bells being relocated to the new church. Whilst I'd love nothing more than to say this was because of black masses, a demonic presence or witches terrifying the locals, because let's face it, it makes for great storytelling. It was actually for the very boring reason that there were too many bums and not enough pews. This and convenience were the sole reasons for the abandonment. However, it is since the abandonment that strange occurrences have taken place at the old ruins. For decades, stories of witches, spirits, hooded figures and Satanism have been associated with these ruins. And as is the way with these things, the old ruins and its dark stories have been absorbed into the local folklore and its history. Without further ado, let's delve into some of the dark events that have taken place at Clop Hill's old parish. The old ruins gained national notoriety in the 1960s. It was during this time of free love and spiritual reconnection that a large number of people turned to the unconventional paths of spiritualism such as Satanism and witchcraft in particular as alternative forms of worship. Clotbill Wild Ruins was the scene of what I consider to be a bizarre and extremely disrespectful act when individuals desecrated the grave of one Jenny Humberston, a girl of 22 who had died back in 1770. Her bones were taken inside the ruins and placed in a ritualistic fashion before the altar. The skull was impaled on a spike and satanic symbols were scrawled on the walls of the ruins. The conclusion of this ritual was the sacrifice of a cockerel. What followed was a media circus that would ensure the ruins had more than one unwelcome visitor. Despite a young man coming forward and admitting the initial ritual was a joke, albeit one in poor taste, several more incidents of desecration and alleged black masses took place over the years up until the 1970s. Whilst it may seem I have taken a critical view of this, I simply do not condone the desecration of the dead, and I believe that people's spiritual pursuits should not expand into the disturbance of their rest. Nevertheless, it was unfortunately the grave of Jenny Humberston that was continuously disturbed during this period, as well as others. So much that the gravestones were moved to the edge of the graveyard in an effort to hinder the perpetrators, where they can still be seen to this day. A question you might ask at this point is, why would old ruins in the middle of Bedfordshire of all places be the target of a cult activity? Well, there are many answers to this. Firstly, legend has it that the church was built facing the wrong direction. When churches are traditionally built facing due east to Jerusalem, it's said that rather than facing the way to heaven, the ruins instead open an entry to hell. Another story is that the ruins were built upon the mass grave of a leper colony and that the collective pain, death and misery has essentially scorched the earth with a black star by cursing the location. I would, however, point out that despite this being a very popular story, there is in fact no evidence to support this particular theory. Much of what I've already covered can be explained away by sensationalism and the hapless media jumping on a fascinating and popular subject at the time, opening the floodgates to a slew of would-be Satanists performing bizarre rituals and what have become a notorious location with a very long history. But there are some things that cannot be explained to this very day. 
A former rector, Reverend Leslie Barker, diligently watched over the ruins during this period at great personal expense. It was he who told the press that devil worshippers frequently used the female body as a centrepiece to their rituals, noting that six women's graves had been tampered with. He fully believed that the strange occurrences had culminated in him being cursed by a witch. For years, the bones were dug up, and for years, he put them back, always feeling as if he was being watched. His health deteriorated, and most tragically of all, his young daughter was hit by a car and sadly passed away. It's been implied years since that her death was due to the curse. One night in 1969, seemingly unable to continue, Leslie fled Clop Hill in terror to nearby Hitchin, where he lived in a cottage for some time with uh, little disturbance. Unfortunately, one morning he opened his front door to find the aftermath of a ceremony on the path leading up to his cottage. It's been said that the Reverend had in fact kept Jenny's bones in the boot of his car for six years because of the black masses and the desecrations. The bones were returned to Clop Hill not long after, and to the best of my knowledge, he was not harassed again. As well as the Satanism and rituals, it has been said that several spirits have been seen on the grounds. A hooded monk has been seen wandering the ruins as recently as 2016 as well as a figure clad in white, staring down the church nave, despite being seen through a window two metres above the ground. It's believed that this may be a former clergyman of the old church, perhaps unaware that he's dead and given a sermon to the darkness. Another is the ghost of a young man named George, who can be seen walking amongst the graves, looking for the tombstone of his friend. His friend had been a pilot during the Great War. His aeroplane had crashed and being in the area, George ran to his aid, and unfortunately, he was also severely injured and later died of his injuries. In death, it would seem George is trying to find out what happened to his friend and has no solace in death. Perhaps because of the black masses, it has been said that Clop Hill simply feels evil. Indeed, one of the recurring themes in my research has been of a feeling of utter evil, malevolent and horror inducing terror. Whilst filming a documentary in the 90s, Eric Maple stood in one of the desecrated graves and described a terrible feeling of being watched, saying that he place was absolutely evil and that he never, ever wanted to return. In closing, the old ruins of Clop Hill have a long and dark history, one which is as tragic as it is fascinating. Perhaps, although originally a hoax, the media attention attracted some very real satanic forces that in turn used ancient necromantic rituals and summoned a dark and demonic presence to the old church, turning a place that was created to be a pinnacle of the Christian faith into one of terror, a presence that can still be felt today. Damien O'Dell said of the Clop Hill ruins, after nearly 40 years since the desecration took place, the aura of evil surrounds the church like a fog that surrounds the coast, and he ultimately deduced that it was a place best left alone. With this in mind, would you go to the ruins?
please comment your thoughts in the comment section below.